We have to take a little overseas trip here. Yahoo Finance is taking over Can Lions this week. Our very own Brad Smith and Brian Sazi are going to be sitting down with leaders in marketing, advertising, sports, and media. And they're joining us right now live from France. Oh, guys, I can almost feel the sunlight on my face just looking at you. <laughs> oh, it's bright out here, Julie, and we're having a great time. Brad Smith here with Brian Sazi, and we are at the Yahoo Finance, at least pavilion right now. And Can Lions is going amazing, and it's about to get even more amazing for some of our viewers. We've got a very special guest. We've got the chairman of UTA, United Talent Agency, Paul Wachter, joining us here on set. Paul, great to see you. Great to be here. Paul, you're you. extremely well connected, as many of the profiles that come here are. This is a conference that typically talks about the best in entertainment, the best in advertising. For the conversations that you're having with some of the largest executives that have made their way to Can. What are you hearing from them? What is the pulse check or the vibe among some of those executives? Well, I think that uh, I think there's a lot of general confusion and concern about the global economy. I think that there's a lot of mixed signals out there. Um, I was actually with the CEO of a major luxury brand this morning um, in the watch business, who was telling me that you know their their information has been that Gen Z is living at home and spending a lot of money on luxury and that luxury brands are doing extremely well at the same time that the overall the employment numbers are strong and yet you hear a lot of young people can't get jobs um, as everybody knows there's a lot of commercial real estate issues uh, which a lot of people are very worried about and um, you know the Fed has been tightening rates and so that has a big effect on the housing market so I think what you hear uh, here and everywhere is there's a lot of uncertainty a lot of confusion yet economy's basically good inflation is starting to calm down and luxury seems to be doing well how does that environment you just described from an economic standpoint how does that change the messages you tell to the talent underneath your umbrella how do they how could they better connect with the audiences they're trying to connect with? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think, first of all, you know, talent is talent. And there's always there's always a market for talent. Top talent right here. Brad. Right, right, exactly. Look at you two. <laughs> and, like, the, the thing is that the bigger question for talent is what's going on in the streaming business and the streaming wars. And, you know, you, you have uh, some articles that I've read recently where you see that, you know, what's been going on can't continue. Hmm. The kind of spending that Netflix and Disney Plus, and you see all of them starting to pull back. Warner Brothers canceled some movies. You know, uh, Netflix is saying they're not going to spend as much money. But, but yet, there's a tremendous amount of production. Now, in the middle of this, you have a writer strike. So the writer strike, you might have an actor strike. You don't yet, but you might. And so the biggest concern, I think, for talent, at least Hollywood talent, would be how long does the writer strike last? How bad is the pullback by the streaming companies in terms of how much they're willing to spend on content? On the other side of the coin, in the music business, where I spend a lot of my time, it's never been better. The, the uh, live music business is off the charts. There's more tours than ever. Is that just because of recovery spending? Is that the experience spending that you're seeing among I th consumers? I, th I think it's both. I think it's a COVID recovery where people couldn't really go to concerts for a while, but that's already over a year old. I think it's a lot of people haven't been out on tour, like Taylor Swift has been out on, Drake is going out on tour, he hasn't been out on tour in a while. People are, go big acts are going out on tour that haven't been out on tour in a while. But you also have the spending thing that we just talked about, and you have the sort of COVID pent up demand. And I think you just have a real desire by this generation to go see live entertainment and live music is great entertainment. Paul, our newsroom would love for me to dive deeper into Taylor Swift. I'm not going to give them what they want. I'm going to focus on LeBron James. Uh, this is someone you've worked with uh, for a very long time. You're a key player in his various lines of business. As he nears retirement, what does the next decade look like for him? Well, I think I think LeBron has been very public. They're saying that he wants to own a team, and that's something that we're thinking about, working on, um, and it's been fairly public. And so, you know, there might be some expansion franchises awarded. We're working on that. You know that LeBron is very affiliated and an owner of the Fenway Sports Group, 
and as am I, and we think they're a great management team. We, uh, we own a baseball team, obviously, the Red Sox, Liverpool, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the NASCAR team, and an NBA team would be a natural addition, and having LeBron as part of the family uh, would obviously make it even even 100 times better. So I think that's one thing. Uh, LeBron and uh, Maverick and I have engaged in a lot of business ventures. I would expect that to continue. Does he want to be a majority owner, or is it something like what Michael Jordan Well, I think did? I think in the way, again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't want to say the rules and be wrong, but I think there's one person who's the governor of a team, doesn't have to necessarily be the biggest owner, but has to have at least a minimum amount of ownership. I don't mean minimal, I mean minimum, meaning I don't know what percent it is, but you have to be a serious owner, but you don't necessarily have to own 70% of the team. You could still be the governor, which is the person who's sort of appointed to speak. Most sports have some kind of a rule like that, that there's one person who's kind of, they, they don't want five, they don't want a committee. The, the leagues don't want a committee. So that's what I mean. And I think though LeBron is always interested in business. We have a tequila company that I started with him and Matt Lobos. Lobos, which is doing great. But more importantly than it's doing great, he absolutely loves it. Right. You know, uh, we had a, a, someone made us an offer to buy the company after about a year, and LeBron looked at me and was like, why? How much was it worth this at is that too point? much fun. Whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it was worth a lot of money, but the point was he was like, this is fun. Let's do it for longer. Maybe we'll sell one day or we'll sell part of it one day. But the point is that he enjoyed it and that we had fun with it, developing the tequila. We have a partner, Diego Sorio, Spanish guy who's done a great job with the bottle and with the tequilas and the flavors. LeBron loves it. He's been involved in everything. And so he enjoys that kind of stuff. He was involved with Blaze Pizza. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had many things along the way. Obviously, Spring Hill, which is their production company, which Mav runs, but obviously LeBron's very involved. So he enjoys that. I expect Spring Hill to continue to grow. I expect him to be able to, LeBron, to spend more time on that. Yeah. I expect that, you know, whether we'll own Lobos forever or not, or we'll do something else, you know, there's, he, he's, he's an interested person and he's not going to sit around on the beach, so to speak. And I think he really wants to own an NBA team. <laughs> you are tapped in to the vision of ultra-high net worth individuals and even how they're approaching some of their own alternative investments here as well. Paul, we appreciate you helping break that down, what you're seeing, the conversations you're having here at Can Lions.